Welcome to Bit Science. This tutorial is on component communication in Salesforce. We will explore how components in a web application communicate with each other, covering topics like passing data from child to parent components, using custom events, invoking public methods from parent components, and selecting DOM elements using query selector and refs. Whether you are an experienced developer seeking to broaden your skills or a newcomer, eager to delve into Salesforce development, you are in the right spot. Without further delay, let's dive in. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and Cambridge science education. So we can pass uh, from parent to child as a public property using at API. That's right. Now, from child to parent, if you need to pass any information, we don't have public property options. Yeah, why? Because how you write parent child. So if this is a parent code, yeah. there you call parent the child. Parent. Okay, so your child is not calling parent. So child cannot pass value to your parent component attribute. So for child to pass any information to the parent, we have one way to do it and that's a custom event. We can create custom event in the child component. So to create a custom event, you need to go to JavaScript. To reach JavaScript, either you have to do it uh, in a particular lifecycle event or in a JavaScript method. So for example, when I click on the button, I would like to send a message to my parent component. So in the button event handler, you are going to create your custom event like this. So we'll create selected event as a custom event and we'll give a name to it. Always remember the name of the event will be in small letter, small cases. The value that you want to pass, the info that you want to pass, you have to pass it as a JSON and in a JSON, there is a detail. So detail has to name as detail only. Okay, no other way. So in detail, we can pass information of author, information for the instructor. Okay, so I'm passing these two information again as a JSON and the JSON object name is detail. This is fixed. We can't change that. We ideally should not change. Once the event is created with the value that you want to pass, you have to dispatch the event. You have to fire the event, trigger the event. So event you will pass, call the dispatch event from the current component. Then it's time to handle the event. So where we are going to handle it, we'll go to the parent. In the parent, we are calling child. And we are saying that this child will fire sample event. So when this child will fire the sample event, I'm going to call this JavaScript. So on sample event, I'm going to call this handle sample event JavaScript in the parent. So inside a parent JavaScript, I have written this handler code and I'm calling event.detail. So when you call event.detail, it will return you author and instructor both. You are stringifying it using the JSON class. That's totally up to you what you want to do. You can grab event.detail.author separately, separate from instructor, we can do that. Okay, let's uh, start. Uh, how you can pass information from parent to child. We already got one option that is your. The other option is calling child's public method. So my first question to you is how you can create public method. So what you're going to do here Let's say this is a parent component code. You have a div tag. Then you have written a child tag. And then you have some P tag. You have a card tag. Okay. In the JavaScript of the parent, you will search for the tag with the name of child. If that is there present, you'll grab this in the object. And in this object, you will call the public method. So whatever public method is, you will call that method 
in the JavaScript. So that is a way to invoke public method from your child into your parent. So I have a student tile. This is my public property, right? Then here I'm saying this dot query selector and I'm looking for this child component. So what it will do, it will go to the this dot template. That means current component template. It will load the whole component template. It will search for student tiles. So it will get the student tiles here that from this component or this tag or this element, it is calling dot unselect student. Unselect student is the public method in the student hyphen tiles component. So this is a way to call your public method from the child component to your parent. All right, so there are two ways to select DOM element. We have already seen query selector and other one is refs. Refs is another template directive. So LWC ref student tile. So instead of you know searching on a C hyphen student hyphen tile, I'm going to search in this component, do we have any reference by the name this student tiles? So it will automatically take you to this child component and call this method. This is the latest technique being added. Earlier we used uh, this standard, which is a JavaScript standard. This is a LWC standard. It's a way how LWC can refer any tag, like an ID. You know, you would have seen some tag. You can define ID in those tag. So refs is about that. The LWC ref is again trying to create an identifier for the tag. So you can use that identifier in your JavaScript to identify that, refer that tag. So basically to refer the tag, you are creating a reference by the name student tiles. And in the JavaScript, you will be searching the reference and you will be retrieving student tiles from there. And you can call any method on the student tiles. Better? It's to identify the tag in the JavaScript. And there you have it. By mastering these techniques for component communication, you will be well equipped to build dynamic and interactive web applications. Stay tuned for more tutorials and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching and happy coding.